Our project is Mental Health and the Justice System in Durham County. I'm Christina. I'm Jacqueline. And I'm Miranda. Our project aims to analyze the relationship between bookings in the Durham County Detention Facility, encounters with Duke Health, and mental health and substance use diagnoses. Our data is taken in combination from the detention facility and with Duke Health, and um, in addition to being a Data Plus program, we're also a Bass Connections project, meaning past the summer, we're gonna be working into the fall and spring semesters as well. For our project, bookings are when someone is entered into the detention facility in Durham County. Encounters are visits to the Duke Health System, which include checkups, visits to the emergency department, and nurse visits. Cost is any cost to the health system associated with each encounter. On the right, we illustrated the relationship between the terms. Everyone in the encounters data set, which are the people in the red box, are also in the bookings data set, which are the people in the blue box. This is because we started from the detention facility population and merged it with the Duke Health data. After exploring the data sets and doing some analysis, we decided to formulate research questions to investigate and dig deeper into our data sets. Because we were given census tract information in the encounters data set, we wanted to see how neighborhoods in Durham, specifically those associated with incarcerated individuals, affected the usage of Duke Health Services. To start off, we looked at the association between poverty levels and Duke Healthcare visits, specifically to see the rates of emergency department, also known as the ED, and non-emergency department visits. Both of these graphs have percentage below poverty as their x-axis, which was given directly from the American Community Surveys. The y-axis for the first graph shows the ED visit rates, ranging from 0 to 0.3, and the second graph shows the non-ED visit rates, ranging from 0.6 to 1, which were calculated based on the visits over the total number of individuals in the encounters data set per census tract. The first graph shows a positive trend, meaning poor communities have more ED visits compared to less poor communities. The second graph shows a negative trend, meaning poor communities have less non-ED visits. We also wanted to explore the research question, how often does incarceration interrupt care of a chronic illness, such as illnesses like diabetes and hypertension? We wanted to see if there were differences in the type of crime people are booked for in the priority chronic illness group, which includes six chronic illnesses versus in the data overall. So we also wanted to control for the age variable since people with chronic illnesses have higher age distributions. So the bars are split in the overall data for under and over age 40 and chronic illness for under and over age 40. From the graphs, we can see that crime type varies mostly by age. So older people who are represented more in the chronic illness group are booked for less serious crimes. Our third research question is, what are the differences in how justice involved individuals with severe mental illness, which is abbreviated as SMI, and substance use disorder, which we abbreviated as SUD diagnoses, pay for their visits to Duke Health? And looking at the bar graph on the very right, we can see that Medicaid is overrepresented in SMIs compared to SUDs in the overall population. This means that individuals with SMIs tend to use Medicaid to pay for their encounter more than people with SUDs or um, the general Duke population does. Additionally, more common SUDs such as alcohol and nicotine tend to reflect the overall population. For future work, focusing on census tract and Duke Health Services, we want to create heat maps to visualize the census tracts and focus on other variables including health insurance and race. We also want to control for proximity because there are multiple hospitals in the area, and this can have an effect on the ED visits. For chronic illnesses and incarceration, we want to question how incarceration interrupts care, and we also want to include more than just the priority chronic illnesses. And for insurance across diagnoses, we want to understand how time incarcerated may affect how a person pays for their encounter. Thank you.